The Dwell Design Leaders film series is brought to you by HP. The computer is personal again. This 50-year-old architectural model of a microhouse is one of the early ones using a steel tube matrix. It has an upper deck for sleeping and also has a very deep soaking tub which has a cantilevered top that opens up. You can see the foliage appears to help the occupants be conscious there is a world outside their domicile. The very first living structure I designed, I built for myself in Peoria, Illinois, in a, in a six flat in 1949. That's on the cyclorama set of the Today Show. This was something I called in a burst of modesty the ultimate living structure. I had great boots. I built an outdoor living structure. It was wonderful on a beach. I erected it at Westport. In 1962 and 63, I was able to activate a little research area on the old farm at Groveland, Illinois. And I had a grand foundation grant. So I wanted to try using the steel tubing matrix and inserting the volumes into it. What came to be called the shoebox house because the shape of the volumes, they were narrow and long. Uh, it was done in 1963. And the volumes were simply inserted into it. It was sort of like a wine rack. I lived there for a couple of years. I always wanted to include what, what Look Magazine called the foliage, and it was simply a cased up random collage of black and white Life Magazine photographs of the time. And I wondered if that could be made uh, mobile, if that could be made active. I wanted to make a structure where the transfer of information would truly be experiential. I built the knowledge box in 1961 and 62. It was a projection device, a 12-foot cube, four projections on each face, even including the floor. Ah, what happens beyond that door? The door had a certain mystique. You would go in, and immediately the projections would start. You were absolutely surrounded by media, and that was a new experience, and human beings are interested in new experiences. The play of the projections on them was highly evocative. It integrated distortions. You distort things, you see them in a much more interesting way. It offered a kind of uh, platform for modeling abstract ideas in a way that really made them accessible to people. I think it growed the expanding consciousness of media, and it did it three-dimensionally. How can it get any better than that? What we're looking at here is an extension of the idea of the knowledge box. The fundamental idea of it was you were not conscious of where the entry was, so you could make one circuit or a dozen circuits, and that's what made it potentially valuable. It sounds Olympian, but the real worth of that stuff is uh, some young person picking up on it and causing them to do something. But not that thing. It can be something else. And that's what's important to me.